Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you a cool new AI tool called Onboard AI. And the point of this AI is it will load in any GitHub repo that you give it, and it will allow you to ask questions about that repo. So if you wanna ask questions about the code base, you can. If you wanna get example code from that code base, you can. And if you even wanted to write new code for that code base, you can. You just start by passing in the repo and then it will allow you to ask the questions. And I just wanna mention that this video is sponsored by Onboard AI. And if you wanna get a free month with the pro plan, just use code pretty when you sign up. And I'll put that in the description as well so you can see it and also a link to the app. So it's getonboard.dev or you can go to the link in the description below. So for this video, I'm going to demonstrate with a few repos that I have. I have this Udemy clone that I started writing but I abandoned. Also this course platform that I started on and abandoned somewhat. <laughs> my YouTube video code, which is actually my favorite use case for this tool, simply because it adds so much value to my YouTube channel. So make sure you keep watching so you see how I use my YouTube video code inside of the tool so you can kind of figure out what I've been talking about over the years on my YouTube channel. And then also this job portal app that someone else created. So I'm gonna load these four repos into the tool to show you how the tool works. So let me start by loading a repo that I worked on some time ago. So I was looking for a private repo that I could demonstrate for this. So I was building like this Udemy clone for an app example. So let me just paste in the URL into the input there and then it's gonna load my repo and I'll just wait for it to finish loading. And now that it's loaded, I will ask some questions about it. So I can say, you know, how many models are in this code, right? I can ask this question and it gives me an answer. So you see, I was building a Udemy clone. So of course I would have like a course and a lecture model. And then I also had like a user model, a comment model and a review model. And the nice thing about this is it also gives you the source of the answer. So if I click view sources here, I get a link to uh, the code right away. So I don't have to look through the code base. It's already here as a link. So I see the five models that I have uh, and they're here. I could also ask it, uh, can you create a new model for me? create a model to represent, let's say transactions. So we're going to have it create us a new model and let's see what it will look like uh, given what we've done so far. So we see it's finishing up, it's just uh, writing out the explanation. But as you can see, it's already using like the course model that I have. So it's adding the foreign key to that. It's using the proper thing for my user model because I'm using like a custom user model. So it's loading in that as a foreign key. And then the other things are just pretty standard fields. But I can just copy and paste this into the code and it will immediately work for me because it's following the patterns that I've already written in the code. So it's more just asking like questions in general about like how you could do something. It uses your entire code base as the context to all the answers that it gives you. And that's really nice. And as you can see, it gives us an explanation of like all the fields that I would be adding for this transaction model. And also tells us how to migrate it if we didn't know how to do that for some reason. So I have another one. I have like this course platform. Uh, let's go back to the homepage and let's add this. So I'm gonna load in my course platform. And now I'm on my course platform. So let's ask a question. Uh, how many tests does this repo so I believe I wrote a couple of tests. So let's see if they show up. So I don't have to go looking through the code for them. So it tells me that there are some tests in test.py. And I also have some functional tests. Um, it can't quite get the exact number, but it can give me an exact link to it. So if I just click on this link to the functional tests and click on test.py, I immediately see the tests that are in there. So let me ask a question about the test. I can say, uh, which tools are used for the functional tests? And let's see what it answers. So here it's telling me that it uses the static live server test case, which is pretty typical. But it also tells me that I'm using Playwright because Playwright is the thing that I'm using to automate the browser. And then it's also telling me that um, I'm using this Django allow async unsafe, which is actually really important in this case, because it allows me to run the test in a particular way. So it's good to know that by just asking questions about the repo. And if I want a new test, can you create a test to add a comment, right? So I have the ability to add comments in the code. Let's see if it can create a test to 
uh, tests adding comments to the functional tests. So it opens up a new page, puts in a username and password, and then it just does everything. It fills it in to log in first, and then it goes to a lecture page. It posts a comment, clicks on the add comment button, and then it sees that the comment has appeared correctly. So I was able to generate an entire test for my project by just loading in the repo and uh, asking it to create a new test for me. So of course, there are many other things that you can ask. So anything about your repo, you can ask this tool because it has the context of your repo in the tool. Okay, so now I'll load in the repo for my YouTube video code and hit get started. Now I'm on the page here and let me ask a question about the code that I've written for my YouTube videos. So are there any examples of using Celery here? And we'll see what it says. So it tells me, yes, there are several examples. And it gives a short description of what I talk about in that video. Uh, so we can view sources here. So if I wanted to see like this example app with multiple files, I can just click on the link in the sources. It will take me here. And if I go up one directory, there's actually a link to my YouTube video where I talk about Celery. So I can go to another one, like this one with Django. I can open it up and it's taking me directly to the code. But if I just go to the part with the title, then I'll have the YouTube link. And you see here, I have this video on Celery and Django. And if I want an example code, like in the style that I write in my videos, I can say, um, can you give me an example create app function that is used in my videos, right? So hopefully it knows it's me when I say my, but let's see. So here I have a video called learn a different approach to configuring your Flask apps. And we see here it creates a very simple create app function. And then also it uses another create app function that I use uh, from this create a YouTube search app video. So this one's a little different because it has a config file. It uses a blueprint, it loads the um, config file using from PyFile and so on. And if I wanted to see those videos, I can just click on the link here and then I could go to the title of the video, click it, and that would immediately take me to this Flask config video that I made about a year ago. So now let's go back. Okay, so for the last repo, let me load in this full project here, Django Job Portal. I've never seen this before, so I wanna ask some questions about this repo. So I can say, what does this app do? And it will give me an answer. And it tells me that it's a job portal, it allows users to post and apply for jobs. It's divided into different modules. Uh, so this is great. Like if I wanted an overview of the architecture, I could ask it, um, what is the most used model in this project? Let's see what it says. So it can't quite give me the most used in terms of number, but it can give me the most important, right? So the resume CV category, resume CV template, and resume CV. Um, it also tells me that there is likely a user model defined. It's also saying it can't quite get the information, but I have a link so I can uh, look at the uh, resume models here. And it's just saying that these are important models in the entire and if I wanted to ask other questions, does this project include tests? We can ask and we can see what the answer is. So it tells me that there are some tests. Uh, the accounts directory doesn't have any tests, but the job apps does have tests. And uh, we also see the sources here. I can just click on one. The resume CV part doesn't have anything. Uh, but it looks like for the jobs app, we do have something. So I can go to views and I can see everything there. So just some questions that I can ask about this project that I've never seen before, just so I can get up to speed on how it works a little bit faster. So those are some of the things that I want to show you in this video. But of course, there are other ways you can use this tool. You can use it as a replacement for documentation. So instead of looking up the docs, you can just ask the tool and it will give you answers about the repo that you loaded. Um, you can ask it questions about specific lines of code in the repo. You can ask it questions about errors that you can get and more. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. I'm interested to see. 
uh, let me know if you try it out as well. And if you want to get that free pro membership for a month, like I said, just use the code pretty and you will be able to uh, get that for a month. So that's all I have for this video. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.